Hi, I'm Dennis Kelderman with the Cessna Structures Group. Today we want to look at the uh, optical micrometer and uh, I'll tell you a little bit of a story behind uh, my experience with this device. Years ago, maybe 25, 30 years ago, I was on top of a fuselage and I had corrosion, surface corrosion, uh, that had appeared underneath an antenna. And I had been working with one of our structural engineers and I wasn't really sure where to go with this because I had, even after I cleaned this, the corrosion off with Scotch Bright, I had a, a fairly large pit in the aluminum. And the engineer said, do you have an optical mic? He said, do you know how to use an optical mic? And I said, uh, no. He, he said, well, you've got one. He says, there's one in the crib. So I said, well, what am I going to do with it once I get it? He said, well, just take a eighth of an inch drill bit, number 30 drill bit, just put it right over the pit and just spin it with your finger. And then when you get to the shiny portion at the bottom of that, that hole, after the corrosion's been removed, then we're going to measure the depth of that damage. Well, it sounded a little bit bizarre to me because I, I had never measured anything that minute. So I got a hold of the, the uh, optical micrometer, and I'll go ahead and just do a demo here today. This is the Monocle mon Model 966 optical micrometer. And it's, it's kind of strange that I really like this device. Uh, and and uh, usually we don't show our affection towards a device like this, but I must admit I was afraid of it. And if I go through our shop here, I'm probably going to find people that are afraid of this device. Uh, maybe it's because a lot of us didn't do well at chemistry that we think, wow, it looks too much like a microscope. Um, or maybe it's just the fact that we're afraid that we won't be able to figure it out. Well, it's really not that difficult. And so, as in this demonstration, we want to look at some of the features, some of the things that we can do. And, 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 and on the pro side of this device, I really, really like the accuracy. We get damage description all day long that we, we question, we wonder how accurate is this. But when we use an optical mic, we're, we're talking about extreme accuracy. Secondly, when I take an evaluation of a scratch or a gouge or a dent, I don't know how thick the, the primer or paint is. I can measure primer and paint thickness with this device. So here we see the device, and you can see that the device has a uh, little flashlight mounted on it, and that flashlight is going to go, we want to focus our beam directly underneath uh, the optical piece, like so. And I'll tell you what, the older I get, the more I like light. And so, if you want to take another light device, like this flashlight, and, and cast it on the area that you're working, uh, it's not a problem. Uh, it, it won't in any way wash out uh, what we're looking at. It will really uh, actually cause it to stand out. So uh, that's something that, that I suggest to you. Whenever we're using something that involves a vernier scale, one of the things that we're always doing is, is finding out if we're starting from the zero point. And that's, that's probably one of the most difficult uh, areas of using this device is that we're always taking two measurements. We're taking a known good area, documenting that, writing down a number, and then we're taking the, the depth of our damage that we're measuring. And so we're always looking by comparison, whereas when we're using a one-inch mic, for instance, when that thing's all the way tight, we want it to say zero but it may not say zero in this case. Now, if you want to try to do that, you're going to find that the only way that you can zero the scale is to place it on zero here, and, and on the bottom here, actually take your, the optical piece and screw it in and out very, very slowly until when you come down 
you're in complete focus with the surface that you're over top of. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, do an example here. One of the next things that, that I like to uh, point out is it's, it's really quite critical because of the fact that the area that we're looking at today is so small, it's so minute, we have to make a mark that we're going to focus on. And I really like using the, uh, the fine point marker, not the big marker, but the, the fine side. This is black and this is red, of course. Uh, and the, what I'm going to do in every situation where I want to use this, let's just say that I was, I was wanting to evaluate this right here. Well, I would put a, a mark right there, and then I would put a mark just outside of it, maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch away as to represent my known good area. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is my known good area. I'll document that. I'll look at my vernier scale. I'll find out what it's measuring. I'll write that down. And then I will go to this other area and focus on it. Once I have that focused and it's going to be, um, I'll be screwing this device inward clockwise going down into the depth of the damage. Once I get that focused, I'll write that number down and I'll simply take the, the higher number from the lower and that is our damage. So what I'm pointing out here is the use of the fine point marker. Here in this gouge, I have made a mark at the what I believe is the very deepest. If we want to take a couple of different areas, we can make a couple of different marks, but, in, but usually we're going for the deepest. Then I've got a mark right here on the outside. It's an area that appears to be within contour, or we're going to call this zero, of the area. And so everything I measure on this thing is going to have a minimum of two marks on it, my known good area and then the depth of my damage. So we'll go ahead and come over here. I want to get this as close as I can over top of my red mark that I've made. Remember, I'm starting with my known good area. And I'll just tell you right off that, that you'll spend more time focusing this device than anything else you do because it's, it's so minute, it's so exact that uh, just to find that place of focus is going to be something that uh, is a bit of a challenge to us at first. The uh, manufacturer suggests, and I do too, that take your, eye, your eyeglasses off because the eyepiece works best with, uh, without glasses. There is an adjustable eyepiece on here, and the guys here in the shop for some reason have uh, run some tape around it so it's actually fairly rigid, but the purpose there is that you can go in and out and fine tune it to your eye. So we've got the light on, we've got it approximately over the point that we are going to call our known good area. And all of this uh, is a good example of just how long it takes to bring things into focus. I can see the red cast in the eyepiece. But I'm just not focused yet. Now I'm finally in focus. And I might, uh, might even provide, uh, in this video clip, I might provide some still shots of really what the eyepieces see. And I'm confirmed that uh, this, this area that I'm calling my known good area is now measuring right at 10 thousandths. And now I have to, to move over to, and in this case it's about a quarter inch over, to find that that other red spot that I've made in my deepest portion.
and so I'm measuring right at 55 thousandths. But that's an area that I cannot evaluate really accurately with any other device. The closest thing I can get is, is on another video is with uh, the uh, digital micrometer. So let's go over here to this, this scratch here that uh, it, it appears quite deep. And so I'll make a, make a mark right next to it, and then I'll make a mark right in the scratch itself. I want to bring my, my uh, adjustment back to closer to our zero where we started. Here's our known good area. Now we've got to find that scratch. And we're measuring right at three thousandths. Some of the, the things that we can do with the the optical mic are, are things that we don't do every day in our world. Uh, one of the things that you can do is that there is a, a foot that is uh, made for this that you can, when you change this foot out to uh, the foot for large tubing, you can lay it right over top of a large tube or even a small tube that you're evaluating. Again, the, the steps are the same. You find your known good area of focus, write down your measurement, then you go into your damage, and it's a, it's a great way of evaluating scratches in tubing. Also, we can take a piece of plexiglass, for instance. Let's just say we take a piece of 16th inch plexiglass, and this kind of illustrates the example. I take a mark and I put it on one side. I flip it over, I put a mark on the other side. If I zero out on that first mark, now I don't have to flip it over this time, but now I go down with my device, I focus on the other mark, and that tells me the thickness of my glass. Well, that's important as we evaluate plexiglass thickness. It is something that is a, a great tool as we try to evaluate chips, pockets, inclusions in windshields. We can go right to the edge of that pocket as well as focus on the other side of the pocket to be able to get some sort of depth, some sort of idea of just how large this is. Uh, and that's not something I have uh, experience with, but it's, it's something that's it's very practical, and it's something that would be great for this device to be used with. So I'm going to narrate a few slides here for us as we go through some of the features. Uh, you'll be uh, looking again at some of the, the ways in which we read the different scales, the three different scales that we see on the 966. The difference in the... Uh, Model variations are largely the different uh, fitting pieces that, that you're able to adapt to uh, the device uh, for use of different applications. But the one that we have today is a Model 966. On the monocle optical mic, Model 966, we find three gradient scales. The smallest one on the, the fixed tube reads hundreds. The scale that is on the large portion that wraps all the way around the device reads thousands, and then the, the very fine gradient reads ten thousands, and which we would call in the, the machine shop world is the, the vernier, vernier scale. Reading the micrometer, once positioned, the optical micrometer thimble is rotated until primary surface of the area comes into sharp focus. Even micro-polished metals contain abrasive lines, which are readily available, visible with the optical micrometer. When these lines are absolutely sharp, the first reading is taken directly off the vernier, off the optical micrometer. Hundreds are designated by the number of the barrel, which is partially concealed by the thimble, A. 
Thousands are designated by the number of the upper scale of the rotating thimble, B, indicated by the large zero on the non-rotating part of the thimble, C. Ten thousandths are designated by the vernier of the non-rotating part of the thimble. Here is an example of one-tenth of an inch red on A. On the B scale, we're reading 52 thousandths, and on C, we're reading 3 ten thousandths taking measurements, surface measurement. After positioning and proper focusing, first reading is taken at the highest or top surface in the specific area. A second reading is taken at the lowest or bottom surface in the specific area. Measurement is computed by subtracting the first reading from the second reading. Appreciate your time today. If you have any structural questions for our group, please give us a call at 316-517-6061. Thank you. Bye.